Ano po ang ginagawa nila sa ganitong nangyaring masamang sistema na paliit na paliit po ang ating farmland? Sorry po, madam ha. Ayan. Na hindi lang po sa Kawayan, sa Isabela, I, I, sa marami po mga pagsisya na marami It's... na po mga subdivision na nagsilipa na Where will the people live if you don't build subdivision? Marami po mga lugar na pwede pong pagtayuan ng subdivision. Huwag lang po i-take over yung mga farms. Kasi nga po, kuminsan yung mga farmers, dahil sila po yung nag they're being taken advantage po of. No. Lalo na po meron tinatawag na rice tarification. So mura po yung mga bigas na dumarating dito, they cannot compete. And then papasok po ito mga negosyante at mag-offer ng pera para bilhin ang kanilang mga lupain. Of course, walang choice po yung mga farmers kung hindi ibenta na lang kanilang lupa sapagkat meron na po tinatawag ng rice tarification. I wrote the rice tarification ah, law. Yun? You know, uh, we wrote the rice tarification law because in 20 in 2018, uh, the price of rice rose to almost 50 to 60 pesos per kilo. And that is the only time President Duterte became unpopular because rice is a, a political crop. When nagmamahal ang rice, nagiging unpopular ang president. And uh, the World Bank, we signed that WTO agreement in 1995. And they gave us 25 years to be competitive. But we failed to be competitive after 25 years. And if we don't open the lib or liberalize the importation of rice, they will bring down our credit rating. And we have plenty of loans abroad. And we have to pay higher interest for those loans so it will be a loss to the philippine government so what i did when they asked me to to write the rice tarification law i gave all the money from the collection of rice tariff to the small farmers 10 billion for the rice competitiveness enhancement RC. fund 5 billion for mechanization, 3 billion for seeds, 1 billion for loans, 1 billion for training. And anything above 10 billion that was collected, it was given to the rice farmers owning 2 hectares and below, 5,000 each, 1.6 million farmers. So that is 8 billion. So a total of 18 billion, which is the collection of the rice tarification law na rice tariff. Alam ko po I yan. don't feel any guilt to the small farmers. All the money that came from the rice tarification law were given to the small farmers owning two hectares and below. So how do we identify those small farmers? Paano They po have na a list. Do you have po a list? They so paano po ninyo pinipili ng DA? They have paano, a list. Ayun po. Paano po pinipili uh, kung sino po ang maging recipient nitong pera na galing po sa rice tarification. How are they being identified? A list of farmers owning 2 hectares and below. So, oh, meron po... Papalista ka sa kanila. They have uh, RSBSA. RSBSA. Okay. Uh -oh. So, I have no guilt to any rice farmers. Uh, All saying... the money that came from the rice tarification I'm not saying were given po guilty. back to the rice farmers. I wrote that law. I know. Ako because yun... I studied the difference between us and the rice farmers of Vietnam. The rice farmers of Vietnam, they produce their palay at 6 pesos per kilo. We in the Philippines, we produce our palay at 12 pesos per kilo. The 6 pesos difference, I look at it. And 350 is labor. That means we're not mechanized. And 250 is the productivity of the seed. So there's something wrong with our seed. So when I wrote that rice competitiveness enhancement fund, I gave 5 billion to mechanization and 3 billion to seed distribution and also to train them to do the same seeds with their own farm. I, I am teaching them to learn how to do inbred seedlings. Uh.